Okay, so um, last time we left off, we finished our decompression routine. Um, we got it actually decoding some compressed level data and writing it to our screen. Uh, I want to eventually make my way to a very simple collision detection, but in order to actually get to that point, we have to be able to draw a sprite to the screen and move it around. So we need to be able to uh, read controller inputs and have that um, change the XY location of a sprite. So let's try to add that. Um, the first thing I want to add is where sprites are going to live in RAM. So sprite uh, RAM is going to equal 200. And this is a very common location to store all your sprites. <clears throat> um, next thing we do is let's actually just designate a few sprites. So I do this where I include other binary data. This is just manually inputted binary data. So let's call this sprites. And the first sprite is a bit of a special one. I don't want to touch this one because this is the only one that you can use to actually do static status bars at the very top while still having a scrolling level, much like Mario does. So I'm just going to leave this in case we need it later. So I'm going to keep it at the normal, just off the screen location. And this is our zero sprite. Next sprite is the one we're going to draw. So the way these um, bytes are set up is this is the Y location on screen, this is the tile used, this is the attributes, and this is the X location. <clears throat> so the Y location I want kind of in the middle of my screen, so hex 80. And then the tile is going to be 1. The attributes, um, I'm going to leave 0 um, just because and I also want to write it in binary. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, the reason it's zero is because all these bytes represent certain things you can change regarding this sprite. So these first two are flipping horizontal or vertical. So flip vertical is the first, the the highest, the highest bit. Uh, flip horizontal is the next bit. The next one is priority. So that's whether it's in front of the background or behind the background. The next three bits are unused. Then the next two are telling you which palette, because there's four palettes, so you need two bits to represent four locations. Okay, and then the X location. I want it to be somewhere in the middle of the screen, so 80. This is our player sprite. Okay. Um, so that data is just somewhere in the ROM. We haven't actually loaded it into RAM, so let's do that. So let's go to our setup, call this load sprites. And what do we need? So we need to know how many sprites we're gonna write. So I'm gonna create a constant just to keep track of the sprites I actually wanna load into RAM. So total number I'm just going to call it total sprites. And this is going to equal 2 at the moment because we have to account for a 0 sprite and then we're going to draw our player to the screen. So we're going to write load total sprites. Now you'll notice I created this constant because we're about to do some math on this number. So if you'll notice Four bytes represent one sprite. So if we were just to index into RAM normally or this table normally, you would get FE. And then the next index location would be FE. And if we only designate two as our index, that's all we're going to write. So we have to multiply our total number of sprites by four. So the way we do that is we shift left. So this is loading number of sprites and then we multiply by 4 okay now we actually store this so we can use it in a significant way into a variable so number of sprites Put this in RAM because we created a variable.
Okay, now we can actually use that to compare and do our writing. So we need a loop. So sprite loop. We initialize our index to zero. And let's load from our data. So load from sprites at index x. We're going to store that into RAM, sprite RAM, index x. And we do that number of sprites times. So we increment x because we're doing this over and over. We compare x with number of sprites. And we break this not equal back up to the loop. OK, so that should write our sprite. Actually, no, because we wrote random data in our ROM. So the NES doesn't know that it's here. So in order to put it into RAM, we wrote we just finished writing this. Now that it's in RAM, the NES still doesn't know to write to write to the screen yet. So we have to tell the NES where the sprite RAM is located. So we do that with direct memory access. In order to do that, I'm going to call this a subroutine called update sprites. And we're going to um, tell the OEM addresses where sprites live. So we load the low byte of sprite RAM and store it into the uh, the low byte of the OAM address. Which I think it's 2003. Uh, then we load the high byte sprite RAM, and then we store that into the high byte of the OAM address. and return from subroutine. Now, in order for this to happen, we have to call this in our NMI interrupt. So we're going to jump to subroutine. We're going to update sprites once a frame. So this happens every frame. OK, moment of truth. Uh, oh, actually. Yes, let's try this. I don't have any palettes loaded. Um, we're going to do that, but let's see it drawing the sprite. Unknown label, 228. Oh, update sprite, update sprites, plural. Bam, we have a sprite. So it's gray because there's no palettes loaded, but we've successfully drawn our sprite to the screen. Let's actually create a palette. So. Um, I'm choosing green as the color for this little donut. Um, I just, I've been working on this little level here because I want to do collision detection, but we're worried about the sprite palette. So let's save this as sprite palette.pal and let's attach this as a binary. So just right under our other sprites, we include it as a binary um, sprite palette dot pal. Render, and we're still gray. Oh, loading palettes. We've only wrote 16 times, so we have to write 32 times now. So write 32 times, because we added a whole nother palette. So this should be green. Green. Okay, so we have a little donut that we can use. Um, and let's actually look at that in RAM and see its XY locations. Whoa. What is my stack doing? It's freaking out. Also, I didn't initialize sprite RAM, did I? So let's, let's work on these two bugs. So this one's easy. Let's go to our reset routine. Let's initialize all the sprites off the screen. Store in sprite RAM. So what this is doing is moving sprites off the screen. The reason we want to do this is because the NES has a a scanline limitation for how many sprites it can write per scanline, and that limitation is eight. 
So once it reaches eight, it stops drawing sprites and you don't want unused invisible sprites to be affecting your game. So let's see if the sprite RAM is initialized. It is not. Store sprite RAM. Oh, index X, index X. Uh, okay, so we initialize all of our sprite RAM, but we have a stack overflow. Why is this happening? So I'm going to turn off NMI real quick. We're going to lose our sprite because NMI is updating the sprites. Okay, so something is happening that's causing an overflow. Let's look at our interrupts. Oh. <laughs> oh, I wish I didn't make this error in the previous video. So I'm returning from subroutine, but this is completely 100% wrong. Sorry for anyone in the previous videos that was screaming at their screen telling me I was doing this wrong. So we have to return from interrupt. We can't return from subroutine. That's completely wrong. So return from interrupts is the correct thing to put here. So that should have fixed our overflow issue. So we have our sprite, let's go to RAM. Hey, okay, we're not overflowing anymore, so that's fixed. That was a super dumb mistake. I'm sorry for anyone that thought that was correct. Um, I'm glad we found it and we fixed it early on though, because I mean, that would have been terrible. Okay, next thing, we have our sprite written. Now we want to be able to read controllers. Um, I'm actually gonna, let's stem this off into another video. This one became a little bit long. So in the next video, let's uh, write a controller reading routine. We're gonna strobe the controllers and move our sprites.